Welcome to Made by Ritzy, episode number five. I'm Brittany, and this is my podcast about knitting, sewing, and my obsession with yarn and fabric. <laughs> um, I'm coming to you from Boston, Mass, where I live with my husband, Dave, and our cat, Slayer. Um, if you've watched my previous episodes, you'll know that last time I recorded, I was living in Austin, and uh, we just moved back to Boston um, a couple of months ago, and I did anticipate recording a lot sooner than this, but, uh, you know, life. Uh, so I just want to give a big welcome to my new subscribers. I noticed uh, quite a few of you popping up here recently, and thank you so much for subscribing, and uh, again, I'm sorry that it took so long to record this episode. I hope to be back in my normal routine of recording every two to three weeks, hopefully every two weeks is my goal. Um, yeah, so you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry at Made by Britsy. Um, a couple of things I want to mention before we get started. Um, I do have a lot to share with you today because it has been so long since I recorded. Um, but I did want to mention, first of all, um, I do have a new background. Uh, so to some of you guys, this might be new if this is your first time watching. It's, uh, you know, nothing's changed. <laughs> um, yeah, but because I am in a new apartment now, um, I've got a little different setup. Uh, so... I'm lucky enough in this apartment, um, we have a two and a half bedroom, but the half bedroom is basically, it's, it's a third bedroom. It's small, but big enough to use as a guest bedroom, um, a craft room, a nursery one day. Um, yeah, so for now, this is my craft room, which I was super excited about. Um, but I've uh, as it turns out, I don't enjoy crafting in here as much as I thought I would. Um, so it's it's really nice to have a room that you can shut the, the door and kind of leave a mess in here. Um, but at the same time, I, I kind of enjoy being in the living room more. It's, we have a decent sized living room. It's really open and airy. Uh, a lot of windows, a lot of natural light. And I have a table set up right in front of the windows. And um, since I've kind of slowed down on my sewing, uh, I realize I don't need all of my machines set up. Um, I, they're really portable. I can just, you know, move it to the living room and sew when I want to. And otherwise, I can keep it in here. And then that actually works out because um, uh, uh, we'll probably end up turning this room into a guest room for the time being. Um, so I guess my point is, uh, so for now I'm podcasting in this room, but the only downside to that is um, we are, or this side of our apartment is right next to a busy street. So there is uh, a lot of outside noise, um, buses going by, a lot of traffic, and then we also have construction going on in the unit next to us, and construction going on in the house next to us. So um, Boston is growing like crazy and basically they're like renovating and redoing everything. So all the homes are usually pretty old, which is awesome because uh, I love old houses. I've got really nice wood floors and there's just other details in older homes that you don't find um, in the newer homes. Uh, but uh, because of that, there's not really a whole lot of quiet around here, but uh, you know, it's just part of living in the city and actually kind of enjoy it. Um, but I'm sorry if it bothers you. It is what it is and uh, hopefully it won't be too distracting. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, if things look a little different, uh, I don't, I kind of opted to go for a more casual setup today. I don't have my lights. I don't have the microphone that I normally use, which my husband is going to kill me because he um, went to school for audio engineering, and so he's usually uh, makes sure I have a really nice professional setup in here. But um, he's working today. He's been working a lot, and it was time to record. So uh, here we are. So uh, yeah, let's get on with it. So the first thing I want to share with you guys today is what I've been working on. So I've got a couple of whips or works in progress. And uh, this first one, I'm 
keeping in my Mavi bag from By the Bay Yarn Co. I've already got it decked out in a, um, uh, quite a few pins, <laughs> adding more. Um, yeah, but this is a great little canvas project bag. Um, so this, like I said, is the Mount Pleasant top, which is kind of funny because I did show this on my last podcast and I think I had about this much done. So the funny thing is, this is actually the second one. Uh, I finished that one in the exact same colorway and ended up gifting it to a friend uh, for her birthday. And I'll check with her and see if uh, she doesn't mind appearing on the podcast, then I'll insert a picture of her wearing it. Uh, but yeah, so she designs and makes jewelry, so um, I knew she would appreciate something handmade and really, you know, uh, appreciate the time it takes to, to make something like this, and I knew she would love it. So it honestly was super easy to give away. I, I don't often give away things that I make, um, just because, you know, for someone that doesn't make things, they, I, I don't think they really get it, but I know she does. And she's super deserving, and honestly, it's such a quick knit, I, it was no problem to just um, cast one on again right away. So this is my second one in this color. I've knit, this is my third one total. I've knit one in a Madeline Tosh uh, liquid gold uh, colorway previously, and I wear it a ton. So I, I, you know, I love this pattern so much, I don't even think it'll be my last one. So... Um, it starts with a little bit of lace at the bottom, which once it's blocked, this really opens up and it's, it's really nice. Um, then you just knit in the round for a few inches, or not a few inches, I think about nine inches. And then you separate for the sleeves. So it's really quick, uh, almost mindless. The lace is really easy and it can be easily memorized. It's really relaxing, um, which is another reason I keep going back to this pattern. And um, I'm obsessed with this yarn right now. So this is uh, Malabrigo, their sock yarn, which is 100% merino wool, superwash. And this is the ivy colorway. So it's this beautiful green. And it's just really, really tonal. It's got a lot of different shades. And I love how, how this knits up. Um, it's just gorgeous. I mean, I don't know if you can see all of the greens in there, but it, it really is just beautiful. And I'm super excited to have this finished, and I, I don't think it'll take much longer, because um, like I said, it does go really quickly. Uh, I'm knitting this on my Lick and Needles size 5, and um, yeah, other than that, there's not too much else to say, uh, except for I love this pattern. Um, did I say it's by Megan Nodecker? Yeah, Mount Pleasant by Megan Nodecker. And I'll I'll put a, like the information at the bottom. Um, so my next work in progress, I'm super, super excited about. So this was kind of a spontaneous cast on, uh, inspired by my cousin Katie, who is also a knitter. She lives in Dallas, or near Dallas, and um, we stay in touch through text messaging, and uh, we usually chit-chat about what projects we're working on, and she had started with Tegna, I had, an, had a question about the lace part, and so um, I asked her what she had just finished, and she had knit a Marfa shawl. So she's a fairly new knitter, and uh, she's really ambitious. She, I hadn't even tried brioche yet, and I've been knitting for, I mean, 10 plus years, and uh, I think she just started knitting maybe a couple years ago, and she's already onto brioche. Um, so she sent me a picture of her shawl, and I fell in love, and I had to have one for myself. So the Marfa shawl is a two-color brioche and garter stitch shawl, a triangular shawl. Um, so I now turned mine into a three color shawl, which I'm not upset about. So, uh, let me just go ahead and show you what I've got in the yarns that I'm using because I think they're great. Um, so this could get a little crazy. I've got three balls of yarn currently attached. Um, so it might get a little, 
tangled as I'm trying to show you, but I'll do the best I can. So I just started this maybe a couple days ago. And like I said, this is my first brioche project. So I honestly feel like it's going pretty fast. Um, actually, I feel like for me, it's going really quickly. But um, I mean, this is a couple days worth of work and not even, you know, like an hour here and there. I mean, it really, really is flying. And I love this already. It's so squishy and uh, I, I can already tell I'm going to be a brioche, you know, convert. <laughs> um, and the cool thing is it's reversible. Uh, I mean, I guess most or all brioche is reversible. I'm not really sure. Um, but this is, so you've got this side, which is a little more subtle. And then you flip it around and you can see the contrast colors a, a little more. Um, so let me okay so now that I got the close-up of that let me show you the yarn that I'm working with because I'm in love with all of these so I guess the story is I bought this which is Madeline Tosh work sock um, in the horn colorway. So it's 75% merino wool, 25% nylon, and it's a heavy fingering to sport weight yarn, which I did not realize. So here's the tag. So I bought this originally to use for the Sipola. If I'm saying that right, pattern by Caitlin Hunter, um, which is a beautiful, one of her new beautiful color work sweater patterns. Uh, I did not realize that this was a heavy fingering weight. Um, that's my fault because I, I didn't look close enough when I ordered it online. Um, so it came in, I, I was doing a swatch and I just couldn't get a fabric that I was happy with. Uh, and I felt like if I went up any higher in, need in needle size, it was really gonna throw the size of the sweater off. And then my contrasting color yarn um, is just a regular fingering weight. And I, I didn't know about mixing those two together, like if I was gonna get some puckering or, I wasn't really sure. So I said, you know what, I, I love this yarn. I can find room for it in another project and I'll just pick something else for, for the sweater that I wanna work on. So, um, yeah, when my cousin Katie sent a picture of her shawl, I was like, this is perfect. Um, and then I went to my local yarn store and I grabbed this. So this, sorry, the cake is really, has really gotten messy after being in my bag for a while. Um, so this is a, a yarn by Swans Island. Uh, they're local, um, let's see, made in New England. So I think Maine. Um, and this is the Carnelian colorway. And this is 85% uh, merino wool and 15% alpaca. Here's, here's their tag. And this is fingering weight. Uh, so I guess the first thing I want to say is I love this yarn. It's super soft. Um, I love this rust color. This is honestly one of my new favorite colors um, right now. The thing that I'm not loving, and it's nothing against the yarn, I think I've just never knit with alpaca before. And I didn't realize that they must have like long black hair. I mean, I thought I'd seen an alpaca and I don't remember them having long black hair, but maybe, maybe I'm just being crazy. Um, so yeah, as I'm knitting with this at, at first, I kept pulling these long black hairs out because I thought it was my own hair getting tangled up in the yarn, which does happen sometimes. But at some point I was like, wow, like there's no way I've managed to, to lose that much hair 
in my yarn right now. So um, I started looking and realized that, yeah, it's, it's part of the yarn. So, I mean, it honestly it really is like nice. It looks like human hair, which is kind of crazy. It's long, shiny, black. Um, yeah, so I, and it, I love the feel of it, but when I look close, I, I guess because it really just makes me think of my own hair tangled up in the yarn and it drives me crazy. But I, sometimes I pull them out when I get to them and then some of them are woven in a little better. So it doesn't bother me as much. Um, but yeah, so that, I, my original plan was to just do these two together because there's some rust speckles in here and it just rent, went really well together. Well, um, I've also been eyeballing this yarn so this is another Madeline Tosh yarn and this is her uh -oh, Tosh Merino light uh, which is 100% Merino wool fingering weight and it's in the voodoo colorway um, yeah, so every time I go to my local yarn store, I, I see this, um, hanging on, you know, on the shelf and I picked it up a few times and I keep putting it back. So I'm like, oh, I, I don't have a project for that, but when has that ever really stopped me from buying yarn? Um, so last time I went, I caved, I got it and I was like, you know what? I have a bunch of other like single skein pink speckled yarns and I was like I'm gonna make what is it a vertices unite shawl by Stephen West um so that I was like okay yes I have a project of mine I'm allowed to buy it now <laughs> so I came home with it and after knitting this up I was like I mean granted I love these two colors that I'm using but I was like I just need to knit with this right now <laughs> so I am breaking up the brioche part, um, which you would normally do. I've got too much yarn in my hands, if that's a thing. I'm breaking up the brioche part where you do three repeats of the, the brioche pattern. Um, for the second repeat, I'm using my third contrasting or my, yeah, another contrasting color. Um, and then I'll do this again for the third repeat. And then you do I think garter in this and then another brioche section um you'll see but anyway so far i really love how this is knitting up i i've been loving neutrals with the pop of neon um i think i'll get a lot of wear out of this i've been wearing my fi find your fade shawl a ton after i thought i wouldn't uh but boston is still honestly it's kind of chilly most mornings and um, the find your face shawl is big enough to where I can kind of like wrap it around and then tie it in the front. So it makes like an impromptu cardigan in a way. Um, so I was like, I really need another large triangular shawl. So I think this is going to be great. Um, especially with the neutrals and the pop of color, I think it's going to go with a lot of things and I'll get a lot of wear out of it. Hopefully. Um, yeah. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys are my finished objects. I do have a couple today. Um, so the first one I have to show you is a pair of socks that uh, I don't think they've made an appearance in a few episodes. Um, basically because, I don't know, with socks it's like progress isn't that exciting. So I usually show them once or twice when I first start and then I'll show like the, the finished object. Um, so this is them. So uh, I don't own sock blockers, as you can tell. Um, I think I'm one of those people who I don't think I'll ever block my socks, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know, just like to knit them and wear them. Um, but these socks, I really love how they knit up. So, uh, as you can see, they don't match, but I'm totally fine with that. Actually, got away with using one ball of yarn, which is really cool. So the, this yarn is called Wool Free Sock, and it's just a yarn that I picked up at Hobby Lobby, which is a craft store in Texas, but you could find it at Joanne's or Michael's. Um, so I wanted to try it because I know some people are sensitive to wool, 
And um, I had never really thought of knitting with uh, like an acrylic sock yarn. Um, yeah, it is acrylic. I started thinking maybe it was cotton, but no, it's acrylic. Um, yeah, I never thought I would knit with an acrylic sock yarn, but I, it felt really cool, so I gave it a shot, and I really, really, really like how they knit up. Uh, here's the tag. So, it's called Wool Free Sock, and one ball was $4.99, so I got a pair of socks for five bucks. Um, I mean... I know some people prefer longer socks and some people have a bigger foot, um, so you you may need two balls. But honestly, if you did contrasting heels and toes or contrasting cuffs, heels and toes, I feel like you could definitely, definitely get away with one ball for most, at least women's feet. Um, but yeah, I so I don't know. I, this is just, I just did a plain vanilla sock, which has kind of been my go-to, um, a fish lips kiss heel, which I've really been liking, and a rounded toe. Uh, so nothing crazy, but I feel like the yarn makes it really, really fun. Um, I love the colors. This, again, this is kind of the color palette I've been, been leaning more towards. Um, so yeah, I'm glad to have these finished. I did knit these on 9-inch circulars, which have also been my go-to for socks lately. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of Magic Loop, so when I do socks, I either do 9-inch circs or DPNs. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of lost my sock knitting mojo. I was glad to finish these. I've got one more pair on the needles right now. I'm not in any rush to finish them, honestly, because it's summer, and I usually just wear my hand-knit socks around the house in winter. Um, I don't really wear them, like, to work, or because I, I walk so much, I honestly feel like they get worn out really quickly, and they're too precious um, for me to do that, so I, I just like to have nice hand-knit socks in the winter, especially in Boston when my feet get cold. So I, I save them for that, makes them a little more special. Um, but yeah, for anyone interested in a wool-free sock yarn um, and, a, and a, an affordable sock yarn, I feel like this is, is great. Um, makes a nice thick fabric, uh, it's really dense, and uh, I really love the colors. So um, yeah, not nothing bad to say about this this yarn um, especially for being a commercial yarn so the next finished object I have to show you guys uh, is something I'm really 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 happy to have finished uh, this is my second Tegna uh, this is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter and yeah I'm so glad to have this finished uh, not because I don't love the pattern because I do but honestly I went back and forth with this yarn and whether I wanted to keep knitting with it or use it for something else. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I followed through and finished with this yarn because I, I do love it. Um, so the yarn I used is from Cloud9 Fibers. They're Philo. Here's the tag. And it's 80% wool, 20% silk and it's in their the jet colorway um so i know people are probably thinking like why in the world would you knit with black yarn um so i have been in what i'm gonna call a bohemian goth mood as far as far as my style goes <laughs> like i've really just been i, I don't know i was craving like black like something black to wear and um, I really liked like the lace at the bottom gives it kind of a romantic feel and it kind of fit in with my bohemian uh, mood that I was in and I guess still am in um, so yeah I when I went looking for yarn uh, I wanted something black and I wanted something like basically solid black but I wanted something a little different, like all the wool, black wool yarns that I saw, you know, I, they have their place, but I couldn't imagine myself knitting um, an entire garment out, out of that. So 
when I saw this, um, because it has silk, it has a little bit of a sheen. I don't know if it'll show up. Let me get a little closer. Um, I know it's black, so it's probably not showing up on camera that great. And I'll try to take pictures before I put this podcast up. But anyway, uh, if you've never knit with silk, it's really cool because it, it gives a subtle sheen to the yarn, which is exactly what I wanted. Like, it's black. It's definitely solid black. Um, but it's just, it's got a little hint of something different, which is perfect um, for what I had in mind. Uh, so, my, my complaint is, as I was knitting the lace, I was like, this yarn is just, honestly, it's so fuzzy. Like, it's got, definitely got a halo. Um, much more of a halo than I had anticipated and really much more than I wanted. But now that it's knit up, uh, I really do love it. Um, I don't know that I would buy this yarn again or if I did, if, I don't think I'd use it for a garment. And then after trying it on, I, I don't really like how it feels against my skin. I find it a little, a little itchy, which yarn or most fibers normally don't bother me and I don't know if I'm tempted to say it's the silk because wool normally doesn't bother me but that would be crazy right I mean I don't think silk is like itchy but I don't know I could be wrong um but either way I think I I can wear something under this and it'll definitely help it, it won't be right up against my skin and I think that will help a lot um I did screw up this pattern in many, many ways, but once I blocked it, you really can't tell. Uh, just to mention one of the ways I screwed up, um, for some reason when I bound off the stitches for the, the neck for the front, um, I did not bind off as many as the pattern said. I don't know why, I just misread it. So when it came time to knit the shoulders, I was off. But I didn't even realize, I don't know, I just kind of went with it. I didn't realize it until it came time to seam the shoulders together. And I had about five stitches more on the front than I did on the back. Um, so as I was doing my three needle bind off, I just, a couple, or I guess five of the stitches, I five times I knit two stitches together and then would do the three needle bind off um, for that stitch. So basically what it did, it, you know, the front's a little wider than the back, and so kind of made a little bit of like a gathering effect, but honestly, when it's on, you can't even tell. Um, so I'm re really not that worried about it. And what else did I do? I don't know. I, I did some other things that I wasn't too happy with, but now, now that it's done, it's fine, and um, yeah, I'm going to wear it <laughs> and love it. Um, yeah, so that's it for finished objects. Uh, so I guess the next thing I'll talk about is what I've been sewing, um, which is another adventure in itself. Um, so my finished object for sewing is actually the top I have on right now, which is, let me grab it. It's the netty pattern, um, which is something I've been wanting to make for a while. Oh, this is a closet case pattern, which I've... Have I made anything by her? I know I bought her jeans class, and I bought, like, the ginger jeans pattern, but I haven't finished them. Um, so, yeah, this might be my first ever finished closet case patterns garment. Um... So it's the bodysuit. I did, you have the option to make a dress or a bodysuit. I did the bodysuit with the high neck and scooped back. Um, my back is very freckly and there are definitely some tan lines there. So just ignore that. Um, yeah, so I am in love with this. This was not uh, what I had originally intended this fabric for. I had another pattern in, in mind that's kind of like a boxy, really flowy top with these big bell sleeves and I'm super excited about it. And after sewing it up and making several, several 
major modifications, I still was not happy with, with that top. Um, I realized as beautiful as bell sleeves are, you know, like the big bell sleeves, they're really not practical, at least for me. I'm like, how am I going to get anything done? I've got this fabric just everywhere, I felt like. So, um, uh, the good thing about this pattern is it doesn't require a lot of fabric. So even after already making something out of this fabric, I'm still able to turn it into a bodysuit. Um, one thing I will say, it is definitely true to size. So I made a size zero, which I think I, I should have made a size two, which is my actual size on the pattern. But I'm always skeptical when it comes to size because I usually end up with um, uh, garments that are a little too big for me and I have to make modifications at the end. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make the size zero. It stretches. What could go wrong? Well, it didn't go wrong per se. Um, cause it definitely fits, but I think if I had to redo it, I would do a size two. Unfortunately, I normally trace all of my patterns um, but for some reason, I guess I was feeling extra confident this day in my size choosing abilities and I just cut it straight out. So I'm stuck with the size zero. Um, I can probably, I don't know, add a little here and there and I'll be fine. Cause it honestly, it fits. It's just a little tighter than I wanted. Um, I have not added the snap crotch yet, which I really need to do because right now getting in and out of this thing is a pain. I mean, you basically have to get undressed um, to go to the bathroom, TMI. But anyway, if you make this, add the snap crotch, please do yourself a favor. <laughs> um, this is just a, I think it's a polyester, maybe cotton blend. Um, knit that I got from this great fabric store right down the street from me called Sophisticated. Uh, I really love the dark floral. Again, fits in with my bohemian goth mood that I've been in. Um, but I'll definitely be making more of these. I've got a ton of jersey in my stash that I have already in my mind. It's going to be made into a netty bodysuit. Um, yeah, so only great things to say about this pattern. I know a lot of people love closet case patterns, and I do too. And now for what could potentially be the longest part of the episode is stash enhancements. Um, so in my defense, it's been, I think, at least two months since I podcasted. So that's a lot of time to accumulate new things. Um, and that I did. So... Okay, where to start? So, first off, I don't know if you guys have heard of a company called Home Row Fiber Co. I think the girl's name is Rochelle. So, I listen to, oh, what's the podcast? I think it's called Love to Sew Podcast. Uh, it's like an audio podcast. And they interviewed um, Rochelle from Home Row Fiber Co. And I really loved her story. Checked out her website and her... Um, bags, everything she makes is amazing. So I signed up for her newsletter. Um, and so I get notified whenever she has a shop update or a sell. And I've been, she has these awesome bags that I've been wanting, wanting to get my hands on. But, uh, every time I, I catch an update, they're already sold out. So, um, she, uh, sent out a newsletter saying that she was having a sell. So, I guess, okay, let me start off by saying the bag that I want that is awesome has this print on it. Um, I think it's this print. Yeah, yeah, it's this print, which is gorgeous. She designs all of her designs herself. Um, and she has this printed on fabric and then she sews it up into a bag. So basically, I guess my thinking was since I couldn't get a bag, I was just going to get everything else with this print on it. So um, I have a shirt, which is really awesome. I've already worn it. That's why I had it tied up in a knot. That's why it's so wrinkly at the bottom. So I just ignore that. Um, I got an enam enamel pen, which you can never have too many of. Um, 
And then I got this wall print, which is still in the plastic, so I hope you can see that. Uh, so I got this to decorate my new craft room. I, I just love that it says craft real magic. I mean, oh, that's just awesome. Because crafting is magic <laughs> for me. Uh, yeah, so super excited about all the things that I got from her. She sent a nice little handwritten note, um, you know, on the, on the receipt, which is always really lovely to get, you know. Um, yeah, and it, I just really, I, I like everything she makes. So, um, check her stuff out, but do not buy a bag because I want one. <laughs> and I haven't been able to get my hands on one. <laughs> Kidding. If... If you're lucky enough, if you're lucky enough to get one, get one. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you guys is a package that I got from Fancy Tiger Crafts. Um, again, I'm subscribed to their newsletter, so they had a sale, and I was notified and could not pass it up. So I got. Let me get, uh, so they sell fabric, sewing patterns, quilting patterns, maybe other stuff too. I know I mainly looked at the fabric and the sewing patterns and came away with two sewing patterns. I got these two. So the first one is the Deer and Doe um, Saffron Pants. Uh, so I have the Cosmic Case jeans pat Ginger Jeans pattern, but I wanted to try a different one. Not that I finished. The first pair of jeans but i'm already on to my second pair <laughs> um i've tried other deer and doe patterns and i love them so um this was on sale so i snatched it up it's just it looks like a basic jeans pattern what what i like about this one is that i think it's more high-waisted than the ginger jeans um which if I, if I was more experienced making jeans i could make that adjustment on my own but nope instead i bought a pattern that would do it for me so I don't know it'll probably be a while before I get around to making these but when I do you'll be the first to know um the next thing is a second sewing pattern um that I got on sale from Fancy Tiger Crafts uh this is the Madeline um it's basically a circle skirt with suspenders uh attached to it which I've already kind of made a version of this that I drafted myself but um I didn't get it exactly right so I don't wear it as much as I'd like to so I've been looking for a pattern like this and I really like the detailing on the front the stitching on the pockets I think that's great um and again it was on sale so it definitely you know I had no problem buying this and and um, foregoing the headache of trying to draft my own pattern again. Even though it's simple, again, it's just a circle skirt with straps, suspender straps, but I don't know, it's nice to have a pattern. Um, and yeah, my sewing mojo has been kind of, so it'll be a while before I get around to this, but um, I'm super excited to make it when I do have some time. Uh, okay. <laughs> The next thing I have to show you guys is something I'm, again, really excited about. Uh, so, I'm sure most of you either are already subscribed to one of the many subscription boxes out there or you've at least heard of them. And um, I love subscription boxes. I've done uh, Ipsy for a little while. I did Birchbox for a little while. But I've never done anything. I guess I've only done, like, makeup ones. Um, oh, I did the, like, Fit fit fab box or something just for one month um yeah so I don't know it's just fun to get something in the mail like a surprise in the mail so this one is perfect so this is a tea subscription box so it's called sips by so basically you create a profile fill out your preferences for tea I mean they they really ask you quite a few questions like um, obviously whether you prefer caffeinated, non-caffeinated tea, a mix of both, um, herbal teas, dessert teas, green tea, like they really get your flavor profile, um, loose leaf tea, bag tea, I mean it they really get a, a good concept of what you're wanting to get. 
So uh, I do drink a lot of tea and coffee. And um, I do have access to uh, a couple of tea shops. I, I work in Harvard Square, um, which uh, if you're familiar with Boston, then you'll know where that is. But um, basically, it's right next to Harvard. So they've got a lot of stuff uh, right in the area because there's a lot of students, a lot of tourists, so there's a lot of retail um, in Harvard Square and they have two tea shops. We have David's Tea and then Tea Lux, which is my favorite. Um, so I do have access to tea, but it's still nice to get tea in the mail. Uh, so I just got this two days ago and I, I wasn't sure what to expect and I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, so it comes in this cute little box. Uh, they send you, you get four teas and three bags of each tea, I think. Um, they give you the little card with the description of all the tea, how long to steep it, um, if the tea can be received, and how many times. Uh, yeah, so I really am pleasantly surprised. I got a tiramisu tea, which I love. Um, I've already tried all of the teas I think except for one so this one is awesome it really does taste like tiramisu um I got an herbal tea which my husband tried this one wasn't amazing but that's fine kind of tasted like green tea um what else oh this is the one I'm drinking today which is called zest tea so this has uh, as much caffeine as a cup of coffee, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, I can say that it does. I mean, again, this is what I'm drinking today. It's really tasty. Um, this is the, what is this called? Blue Lady. So I think it's like a blueberry tea. Yeah. Yeah, like a blueberry lemon tea with as much caffeine as a cup of coffee. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the other tea I got is a cacao tea. So I have not tried this one yet, but I've tried other chocolate tea and I love chocolate tea. So super excited about this one. And they give you a mix. Uh, I guess if you put that you want some loose leaf tea, they'll um, send loose leaf tea and they send these little bags uh, and then I got some bag tea too. So again, I'm pleasantly surprised with this box. Um, so my thinking was if I wasn't happy, I can just cancel and whatever. It's Oh, it's $15 a month. So I guess that is a little pricey for the amount of tea you get, but to be able to get teas that I would normally buy, um, I think that's great and who knows I'll, I'll do it until I end up with too much tea and then I'll cancel um, So next I have yarn stash enhancements um, So oh, I guess I should start off with uh, When I was at my local yarn store um, I So I bought one pom-pom quarterly before I think like last spring and I was not super impressed with the patterns. Like I, I think I ended up getting rid of it because I knew I would never knit anything that was in that book. And I was kind of disappointed because I'd heard a lot about Pom Pom Quarterly and I know a lot of people love it, but I think I just got, I don't know, maybe they're one lame, uh, one lame magazine. So anyway, this one, I, as I was checking out, I started kind of flipping through this and I love basically everything in this book. So the one that really caught my eye is this one. Um, so there's that one and then uh, there's so... Oh, this bag. I'm definitely going to make that bag. Um, yeah, there's a ton of great patterns in this book. So I actually went back today, not that I needed something else to start on because um, I've got other plans in mind but for other projects, but um, I got some yarn to make, to make the top that I just showed you, this one, and I think I actually bought the same color that they knit this with. Um, so I've got my first Shibui yarn. <laughs> this is the Shib Shibui Reed. And it's a 100% linen yarn, and it's beautiful. 
Um, this is the mineral colorway, which is kind of like a medium gray with a hint of purple, um, which I love. So I don't think I've ever knit any, anything out of, I normally don't lean towards gray, but I think because this has a hint of purple, um, it really caught my eye and I'm, I, I might cast this on tonight. I'm so excited about that top. And I'm so excited to knit with uh, Shibui and linen. I, I don't think I've ever knit with linen. So um, yeah, a lot of new things and I'm super excited. Uh, the other thing, well, so I already showed you the other yarn that I got, which is the Madeline Tosh Horn, but here it is in a skein. So... Yeah, as you can see, a lot of awesome, awesome colors in there. Um, so my, my plan, well, I'm using this for the shawl that I showed you, but I'm also, I got some dye. So I do dye yarn from time to time just for myself. I don't like sell it or anything. So instead of, I love this color so much, but since it wasn't going to work out for the top that I wanted it to work out for, I was like, you know what, I'm going to attempt to dye my own yarn in a color similar to this because I have another Madeline Tosh yarn that I got last year for Black Friday. It's the Tosh Mo Light and in Patched Indigo. Um, yeah, so this beautiful blue and it pairs really well with this. So I'm going to use, well, the color that I attempt to dye like this and this, I'm going to use this to make the Cipolla shawl, uh, not shawl, top. So that's my plan. Um, and that's it for stash enhancements, I think. I'm literally surrounded, if you could see the room right now, I'm surrounded by stuff, new stuff. But I think I covered everything. Um, yeah, so that's it for knitting, sewing. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about, I guess, what's been going on in, in my world. Um, if you want to stick around, if not, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, yeah, so I mentioned earlier that we um, moved back to Boston a couple of months ago. Um, we're actually in Somerville, which is right outside of Boston, and I, I love being in Somerville. Um, it's for, I guess growing up in Texas, I never imagined that I would live in a city like Boston. I always wanted to, and now being here, it really is surreal. Like every day I love walking around, uh, seeing all the houses, uh, honestly just being able to walk everywhere I go. I, I walk to work. Um, we're about a mile and a half from Harvard Square, which again is where I work. Um, my husband works at MIT. We're, I think, a mile and a half from MIT, so he can walk or bike. Uh, we've got so many good restaurants close by. Um, my local yarn shop is literally a quarter of a, quarter of a mile away, which is so dangerous. And then my fabric store is maybe a mile away, which is very dangerous. Um, but it really is great to, to be back in Boston. Um, we're on Joseph, or we're part of the Joseph Street Mafia now, so um, we're on Joseph Street, and two of our good friends live on the same street as us, so now we've formed the Joseph Street Mafia, uh, which is pretty fun, but it's great to be back with all of our friends, um, and yeah, I... I'm glad to finally be settled and um, getting the apartment, the finishing touches on the apartment. And now that we're settled in, so th the first week we moved back, I looked into like what uh, the happenings at my local yarn shop and I saw they had a sip and stitch night um, every other Thursday. So for two months I've been trying to make it down there for sip and stitch night. but. Every time something has come up and I, I just didn't make it. Um, so I finally went last Thursday. So basically you bring beer, wine, um, cider, tea, coffee, whatever you want to sip on and you stitch for about three hours. So uh, it was awesome. I really don't have any knitting friends. Um, 
So it was so cool to be around everyone just like making stuff and to talk about yarn and what everyone's working on. It, it was heaven. Um, and not everyone knits. Like there was a guy there spinning and he was amazing. Um, there were some people like doing some hand quilting, uh, all kinds of stuff. It, it was just awesome. And this probably isn't even anything new to some of you guys. Like I know uh, a lot of people are, are way more, um, uh, make more of a point to like be social with their knitting. And I just haven't, I haven't like, you know, just taken that leap. Uh, but I, I did, it was awesome. I made some new knitting friends and, uh, hi Mara and Allison. If you end up watching at some point, <laughs> I didn't tell anyone there that I podcasted, um, but I don't know, maybe next time it'll come out. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's like the cool new things going on in my life. Other than that, it's really just been work. And um, yeah, trying to get outside now that the weather has been really nice. It really is like the best time of, uh, to be in Boston right now. It's like spring weather. It's not too hot yet. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's it. Uh, so nice to chat with you guys again and hopefully I'll see you in another couple of weeks with uh, more stuff to share. Um, talk to you later. Bye.